Hello, welcome to What I Know Now. I'm delighted to welcome my guest, Frankie Sheehan. What can I say about Frankie? Frankie is an ex Munster and Ireland rugby player, Heineken Cup winner, and massively successful businessman with front row speaker and pendulum summits. Frankie's going to give us a bit of an overview about his career to date, mindset, challenges he's overcome, and how to be successful in sport and in business, and a few other topics along the way. Frankie, I'm delighted to have you. Thanks very much for, for joining me today. Uh, thank you. You've built me up there. There's no pressure on me whatsoever here. It's all true. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very kind. You're very kind and, and very flattering. You're all uh, very, very true. Could you give me a bit of a, an overview about your, your background before you, um, you joined rugby and just a little bit more about you for people who don't know you? Yeah, I'm from Cork, but I was born in Toronto in Canada. My father was from North Cork, a place called Boherbui. My mother was a dub, something I didn't advertise at the time <coughs> when I was playing at the height with Munster. But they met in Canada, lived there for 10 years, and I was born there. I was very young when we came back. And uh, it was one of five kids. Uh, I was in the middle. I went to St. Joseph's School and um, played nearly every sport actually growing up. I was and a good average at most sports. I uh, was actually a Cork under 10 chess champion and won a Munster under 16 chess uh, tournament as well. But um, I think I, by default, really got playing rugby one day. A distant neighbour was going down and the first day I played, I really I knew it was the sport for me. It was the one that I was going to be better at than any of the other sports. And then, of course, going to Prez and Cork, which would be uh, a very strong rugby school traditionally and went there and, and kind of the rest in the, in the rugby side of things is history but apart from that I think I always maybe had a slightly different background. My father was a, I suppose he left Boherbui when uh, as a relatively young man he went up to UCC but as he said he left with the arse sticking out through his pants at the time they had no money at all he worked very very hard and uh, I think I always maybe got a bit of the entrepreneurial drive from my father even going back then and uh, he was an auctioneer by trade, uh, owned a lot of property and businesses like that but uh, he gives me credit for selling a house when I was about 16, right? I'm not sure exactly how it went but uh, I did that but we also had pubs and nightclubs in Cork and uh, we started up a business with foreign students during the summers getting them in and some of the younger teenage discos and we made a huge success of it to the extent we were having uh, probably about 5,000 kids a week 5, during the summer. Kids. Yeah, on, on the Tuesdays and Thursdays we were, we'd have up to 2,000 and the other nights we'd make up the numbers. So it was, it was, no, that came after maybe two years and it was a huge success and the costs were very low because it was just a quick sweep and then the main disco would open afterwards. So. Uh, but we worked really hard on it. So yeah, even going back then and organising discos for fifth and sixth year in school, that type of thing. And then, of course, starting to invest in property as well, which uh, that's another story. But um, so, yeah, I always so when I did start to get into rugby, I, I was lucky enough. I played in the get into the we won the junior cup with Prez and then we won the senior cup with Prez. I played for the Munster schools and I kind of continued going up. I was involved in the Irish schools. Uh, and then left school a year young actually if we'd stayed back we would have uh, we won a senior cup but we would have won another one the following year that they won one the following year I'm assuming I would have won if I was still with them and from there then got involved in the Munster setup got my first cap in 1996 I was only 20 at the time and had, you know just started going really well and I suppose my dream came through really because rugby was amateur back then and in 1995 it became professional so all of a sudden there were, there were times where I was looking at going down the rugby league model mm -hmm. because on Friday nights we'd watch the rugby league and I said my god wouldn't it be unbelievable to get paid to play a game that you absolutely love yeah. so I actually had a trial lined up back around that time but I didn't need to go on it because the door kind of opened in uh, Munster and I got in with a part-time contract and I just started working through the, the system and I eventually went from there. And looking back on, on those moments of your life, uh, the entrepreneurial spirit and kind of working with your dad and 5,000 students, how, did that, how do you think that shaped your, your mindset for today? Well, I do think it, while I absolutely adored rugby, there were times during my rugby career I couldn't wait till I was finished. I didn't want it to end any sooner than it yeah. should have, but I had so many ideas and so many things in my mind that I just loved to do. 
and it you know gave me great energy I guess I loved uh, you know the principles of, of starting from scratch and building something up and actually you know doing things that people say that can't be done uh, I hate the notion of being one of the you know 20 years 30 years time being known as these kind of guys who sort of uh, the bar stool wisdom you know with yeah. all the answers and I always had good ideas so trying to just making sure that I acted on some of those so I suppose my father had that has that can-do attitude um, he's very disciplined and he just makes it happen so I think I definitely got um, got some very good discipline probably from him uh, even though I was in trouble probably a lot of the time in school and stuff like that and to a certain extent I was the black sheep in some ways I had an older brother who got 32 points in the leaving which is full marks and yeah. he's an ear nose throat consultant surgeon in Cork I had a sister who did a law degree at 16 years of age and she had it fully qualified by 19 and then I came along and I was the rugby guy and I was a bit uh, light-hearted and caused the teachers a couple of problems and my parents a couple of problems getting called called in but I guess I had a bit of a different you know slightly different skill set and I wanted to make sure I suppose that I activated that as much as possible too. One thing I've always found very incredible is the amount of time in Munster where they look at performance and they're constantly wanting to tweak it mm. and they do the video analysis on that performance and there were very upfront conversations that were happening all together. Could you maybe tell me some of the kind of the, the feedback sessions that would be happening in Munster and the strive to always be better and better? Yeah, and we had this conversation and at the recent Pendulum Summit, the leadership was quite a big theme and got brought up time and time again. But within leadership, I guess, what they're all saying now, and I knew, I suppose, back then, is we had 15 leaders on the field. Yeah. And one of the key traits was accountability. And because, you know, if, if it's nobody's fault at the end of the day, they, they, or if you make the same mistake today and nobody owns up to it, you'll make the same mistake again and again. And that's the problem. So it's okay to make a mistake, but you got to learn from it. Yeah. Uh, so what do they say? Uh, we we fail or we learn. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or, or the other way around. Sorry, we, we we succeed or we learn, and um, and that and that's that's the mantra. So we were very very hard on ourselves. Probably too much so at times in the Declan Kidney era in particular. We weren't interested after a game in what we did well because we probably knew already what we did yeah. well ourselves. But we were very hard on what we didn't do well. How can we improve that? And there's one story actually, I remember after a game, one of the games we lost against Leinster, and which was a local derby always, and we'd lost this game in Musgrave Park, and we lost to 10-5, and we were very, very disappointed, and the video session afterwards was always going to be a difficult one, but uh, the try we conceded, which was the one that you know, defined the game, if you like, was uh, one of these typical uh, O'Driscoll, Darcy, switch-type, loop-type plays, right? and scored under the post and won the match, I think it was 10-5 or something like that, right? A game we should not have lost, yeah. right? So we went through the video session and it was very, very uh, forensically analysed now. Every moment, every touch, every tackle was gone through. And then the moment where the try uh, came up was just skimmed over. And Paul O'Connell, who was our captain at the time, right, uh, turned around and said, what happened there? And the defence coach said, it's OK, we've spoke to the guys involved and uh, we, we had it sorted but he said well, we don't know what happened there and there was a kind of an eerie silence in the room and Declan Kidney spoke up then and he said well look and all the people have been it's been dealt with I want to know what went wrong there he said yeah. and there was another eerie silence and I, I suppose everybody was the people that weren't involved were just delighted that it wasn't them but uh, so what had actually happened is is Ronan O'Gara and um, Lefemi Maffey which were 10 and 12, came up together, but one came up a small bit ahead of the other, yeah. which when that happens, it allows for a little uh, diagonal gap for somebody to get through. So uh, I think what happened with what happened was uh, uh, O'Gara said, well, actually, I came up, but Maffey didn't follow me, so... Chum under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Maffey said, no, 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 hold on a second. It's the other way around. We had called the move that we weren't going up together. We were slowing down, coming up, and you went out of the line and you didn't stay with me. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was a bit of a <coughs> uh, argy-bargy, but it wasn't too bad. 
and the defensive coach came in but that moment alone and I suppose it, it, it that tells a lot of stories it talks about accountability it talks about leadership in the way that Paul O'Connell being the leader you know taking on the head coach in this yeah. and the defensive coach and saying it in front of 40 50 people I want to know and in front of his colleagues one of which is going to take the blame for this yeah. so there, there's a lot so while that was a cringy awkward moment for everybody in the room in particular the guys that had you know they both in their own minds they were both right but if that wasn't identified yeah and uh, that we could have gone to play a, a big match in a, in a european match and a knockout and, and that could have lost the game i think that's important one of the uh, speakers i really enjoyed that pendulum was keith ratzi and he mm. spoke about having psychological safety he said there's too many people just don't want to give upfront honest feedback mm. because they feel that it's not worth giving the feedback that mm. per this person will be able to take the feedback on board or the person will take the feedback on board but be in a bit of a bad humor after it but when you have psychological safety everyone's given very good feedback from a good place because mm. they all won't go won't towards leadership that they want to be the best that they possibly can be or achieve their goals so i think you'd went on to say in the past that you were disillusioned after losing three finals in in one year where mm. you were like you should have won, won the sort of won some of them, and mm. that you were in a place where you needed to look at the mindset that you were looking to go mm. to the next stage and um, mm. go to that next step and kind of get some advice or development mm. on that. Could you tell me a little bit about that story? Sure. Well, one of the things before we move on from it was what Jack Canfield used at the conference, and I've been using it since in connection with our own conference. The feedback has been magnificent with Pendulum, but he gave a suggestion to ask somebody what would you give me out of 10 for that? Be it a rugby performance, be it an interview, I'll give it to you after. Uh, it's a great question. Or, 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 or be it uh, your conference. Yeah. And okay, they'll say, we'll give you an eight out of 10. How can I make it a 10? And I think I've been doing that quite a bit since, and I think it's a really good way. And it's an, so you're getting the compliment and you're allowing them that feedback, but maybe if you gave the bad feedback first, that could be uh, more difficult to accept. You're reading my mind. That's my favorite question that I've heard this year because it's the ultimate yeah. question, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, he goes on to say he asks his wife that every once a week on a Sunday. Yeah. How mm -hmm. would you rate me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get uh, six. Yeah. What time of day is that that he asks yeah. her? <laughs> nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah. He asks her. Yeah. Um, which I think is very brave. <laughs> yeah. So you three, three finals. Yeah, three, yeah. So what happened at the three finals? We, we lost and I was so committed, so passionate. I mean, there was one particular match I stood around in, down in the south of France and I looked around and I said, I'd die for you out here today. And that wasn't just, it wasn't a throwaway one. Yeah. I had thought about it before I said it and I meant it. Yeah. And that's how committed we were. But we had some fundamental issues uh, in the team. There was no question of our commitment, our passion, uh, but uh, the line out for example which was where I was the hooker I was throwing the ball into the line out it wasn't functioning it was uh, it was way below the standards that we had set ourselves and everything else yeah. and to the extent when we played Leicester in the Heineken Cup final in 2002 um, they were they knew where the ball was going before I'd thrown it in and the throw wasn't that accurate either so you know we lost a lot of crucial ball on that particular day would it have made a difference winning or losing I don't know but either way it wasn't good enough we lost to England in Twickenham uh, we got beaten very uh, very well that day which was embarrassing and again Lionel didn't function so uh, I personally needed to stand up and take some accountability for this and I went away and um, Paul O'Connell and Alan Quinlan and, and guys like that went away and we we examined and studied the Leicester lineout and the, the best lineouts around and we said this would never happen again and we made sure we brought those lineouts in. I s went to Declan Kidney at the time, who was our coach, and I said, look, Declan, yeah, I'm having trouble, I'm struggling with this, I need help. And he suggested I go see a sports psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I went to Declan Ahern, who was from Cork originally, he's based up in New Well now. And we had a good chat and I always like talking to these guys because they, I think, especially in a precision type position like hooker when you're throwing a ball or maybe a kicker yeah. when he's kicking a, a ball it's very important I believe and it, w it always worked for me to visualize 
and the more time you spend seeing yourself, not even doing a throw or a kick, but a tackle or a pass or taking the ball on, yeah. the greater chance it is of you having a more successful outcome when it happens for real in real life. And that's, and some people are a bit cynical when it comes to that in sport. And, and you know what, some of them are doing it and they don't know they're doing it, but it's a kind of a personal thing with something yeah. I was interested in. <laughs>